This is the trunk and tail section of an Alapastoma loach. Seems like any other bottom feeder, yes? Now, here's the head. Pretty striking, isn't it? Alapastoma is one of the many enigmatic fishes placed within the Cobitoidea, and Featherfin Films is here to shed some light on it. Alapastoma is the sole genus in the monogeneric family Alapastoma today. Possessing a titanic count of just two species, this is one of the smallest families in its apriniforms. It has a funny looking head, and nobody knows anything about it. Perfect grounds to make a short video, because there's not that much to talk about. Like many loaches, Alapastoma mystax and Alapastoma megalomictor are both found in Southeast Asia. To be more specific, the former fish is found in Thailand, while the latter fish lives in western Borneo and peninsular Malaysia. Alapastoma megalomictor was discovered first by Leon Louis Vaillant in 1902. He placed the fish in the cobitic genus Imperioptus, but realized that the fish looked pretty weird. He erected the genus Alapastoma, meaning sturgeon mouth, for the inevitable day that the fish was reclassified. At the time, the Cobitidae contained most of the fishes we know as loaches today, so into the huge family it went. Weber and De Beaufort realized it wasn't a Cobitid in 1926 and dropped it into the Saprinidae, thinking it was some type of young carp. They weren't too sure and left the Alapastoma mess for some other future ichthyologists to take care of. Future specimens weren't forthcoming, as a Alapastoma megalomictor is a very small fish and a hard to access part of the world, so investigation on where the fish went wouldn't happen again in earnest until the 1970s. With the few specimens in poor condition at his disposal, Tyson Roberts made a valiant effort to get to the bottom of this fishy mystery. The small size, unspectacular looking body, and freaky head led him to compare Alapastoma to Cobidids and the Gonorhynchiform Naria. Gonorhynchiforms is the sister group to all other Osteriophysans, and is a very strange group indeed. Expect to hear about it later on Featherfin Films. Back to our boat headed friend, Roberts concluded its relationships were unknown and dependent on more data, like, I don't know, a non-mutilated specimen? He did conclude that gonorrhea forms were closely related to stereophythons, so he at least got something out of the inconclusive investigation. Roberts finally got access to some fresh specimens in 1989, and tentatively placed the fish back at the committee today. The fish lacked a suborbital spine, one of the family's main diagnostic features, so Collat, there he is again, <laughs> placed the fish in the Balatoridae, where it remained for over a decade. While the genus was in Balatoridae, the other member of Alapastoma, Alapastoma mystax, was discovered in 2002. It differs from its congener by having more, smaller scales and the black bar at the snout's tip. With the powers of genetic analysis, Schlechtiva and Bolin finally deduced that Lapastoma is its own unique loach lineage, sister to the Nemachilidae. The combination of squares and oblique snout, a minute protrusible mouth, a single pair of barbels, large eyes, and 35-38 pharyngeal teeth separate this fish from the rest of its loach relatives. I've gone on enough about these fish's strange taxonomic history. Now y'all need to know why the ichthyologists are banging their head against the walls to figure out these fish's relations. Let's get the obvious part out of the way first. This fish has one of the most peculiarly shaped heads in the world of fishes. Why would a Lapastoma evolve a head shaped like the Rebellion R13's fenders? It's Featherfin conjecture time. I assume most of you have seen what the boat's prow looks like. Very similar to this fish's head, right? The fish wants water to flow around it more than over it. That's fine and dandy, but we're ignoring that this fish lives in large, slow rivers. Beating a current is less important to a Lapastoma than it is to some of its cousins. 
The mouth is small, possessing two barbels, and is placed directly underneath the boat's prow head. The jaws are protrusible, like most other supraniform fishes, and point straight downward. Because of this, I'll assume that the snout contains muscles that control the mouth protrusion. The shape also directs water around the fish instead of over and under it. It probably keeps food particles from being blown away in the slowish currents the fish deals with. As the common name of Alopistoma megalomictor states, Alopistoma loaches are enigmatic in habits, thanks to a small size of around 5 cm max, apparent rarity, and remote habitat. These factors have placed Alopistoma mystax on the IUCN red list as an endangered species. The most scientists can do, unless somebody collects enough to breed, is in further lifestyle from the morphology and the one video from fish base that has been getting plenty of use here. The inferior mouth and long intestines imply the tritivorous diet similar to that of another strange pentagonorinca form, the hinge mouth Fractalamus ansorgi. Hinge mouths also delicately pick through soft substrates for edible morsels with picky mouth, mouth parts. Alopistoma also has uncommonly large eyes, implying a nocturnal lifestyle and or high visual acuity. As a tiny fish, Alopistoma needs to keep on the lookout for potential predators. A streamlined shape and forked caudal fin suggests that the fish is capable of decent burst of speed and sustained swimming power if needed. Alopistoma scarcity and endangered status make them rare aquarium specimens. The number of Alopistoma keepers can probably be counted on one hand. As large rivers and or flooded forest denizens, Alopistoma likely needs a soft substrate to thrive. As many large old rivers like the fish hail from have silt or mud bottoms. Conditions in the Copperwest River Basin where Megalomictor lives are highly variable, as the forests flood and dry out with the seasons. The fish has to deal with black water and white water conditions throughout the year, so a lot of stomach specimens have to be adaptable to changing conditions, like a rally target driver. In the aquarium, this means that they'll likely be happy with whatever kind of water you give them, as long as it's clean. Feeding is another unknown, but I can offer up suggestions. The majority of their diet is likely low in protein and hard to digest, judging by their lengthy gut. That bag of carnivore par pellets should be a rare treat. Since these loaches have a third of the barbel count of their relatives, smell and or touch is probably less important in the daily search for sustenance. Make sure the tank is mature and has plenty of algal mats to graze on. I also assume a high quality algae wafer will fit the nutritional requirements for your average Alopistoma. Since these are grazing fishes, I'm not sure if they compete well for food, so make sure it sinks rapidly. As for tank mates, I doubt that Alopistoma are aggressive towards other fishes. As a tiny prey animal, Alopistoma scans the horizons for danger with its huge eyes, so other small schooling fishes should be added to give it a sense of security. It's reportedly a fish that spends most of its day sitting on the bottom not moving, at least in the Aquaria. And that's about it for Alopistoma. This was about as much information as I could find on the fish, so no long fishy monologues here. New viewers, you know what to do if you want to hear more about cool bottom dwelling fish and semi-obscure endurance racing cars. There will be plenty more where the at came from this year and beyond. This is an Adontis man signing off. Adios.